I went and got surgery and I kind of, I'm like, want to transition back to my natural life. The BBL era seems to be dying out as rapper Dream Doll says BBLs are going out of style. Are we really moving back to the 90s and early 2000s where being naturally beautiful was accepted? Or is this just a temporary change? Well, let's talk about it, baby. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, baby. It's your girl Taylor Patrice, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About It, baby. Let's talk about it. A place where we talk about the foolery that goes on on the www. That's right, the World Wide Web. And today we have a lot to unpack here. Okay, so clearly you guys can tell that I have a little bit more energy because it's currently 7:30 in the morning. Y'all know that I do not do good at night, but baby girl is trying to get her life together so I could come on here on youtube and talk my shit because i be having a lot to say but if i'm not covering stories on here you can always go to my instagram because i'm always talking my shit in the morning i do a let's talk about a baby series in the morning sometimes i'm just spreading love and positivity but other times i'm covering hot topics and my opinion on them so make sure that you follow my instagram because the instagram is lit and not only do I cover hot topics, but I also talk about the journey to becoming an influencer. As you guys know, I am a 10-year influencer. And baby girl still don't have 100K yet, but that's okay because I'm just enjoying the process. I'm living in the moment and I am enjoying the journey. And I'm sharing that with you all. And I'm sharing with you all how I'm able to get the brand deals that I'm able to get. The big paying brand deals, okay? With having a lower following because the following don't matter it's all about the engagement and i am building a community so if you love me if you love my energy if you love all that all that all that then make sure you subscribe and you follow <laughs> but that's enough of the shameless promo let's get into the real reason why you click this video we are going to be talking about the downfall of the bbl and did you ever think that we were going to hear that because in my years of being a teenager, more so just in high school, so from 14 to 18, and then obviously in my adulthood, BBLs was like plastered. BBL, 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 BBL. Like it was given, baby girl needs to be thick. So for us to be returning to like that 90s it girl look, that early 2000s Y2K, like slimmer is finer, natural is more pretty. Like I'm not gonna say I'm surprised, but I'm surprised. Like it's finally here we're finally seeing it so what actually sparked me to make this video is that dream doll did an interview yesterday and in that interview she said that bbls are going out of style and she wished that she never got one take a look at this i went and got surgery and i kind of i'm like want to transition back to my natural body like oh what now yeah do you feel like it's going out of fashion yeah really yeah so how would you go back then? Well, I, I did a butt reduction. Oh, well, so how did you do that? What, lipo, what, just lipo in your butt. What, they just take it all out? They just lipo it. Oh. But it's a process. It's levels. I feel like natural bodies are more and slim, slim, more slim, slim thick. I feel like that is like what's in right now. But this is, the, but then, so naturally are you more, you're slim, slim yeah. thick, right? Mm -hmm. but, but, Nasata, no ass at all. That's me. That was That's that is me. That I was gonna say that was me. That I wish me. I could have like my A cups back, like so bad. But it's just. But why though? Cause I miss little boobs. It be hurting your back and stuff. But also it's just like nothing fits. Oh, like okay. all my stuff has to be custom tailored. Any oh, any right. jean got to be taken in. It's just it's a lot of maintenance. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm sick and tired, and I'm tired of seeing it. If I would have knew what I knew now. I would have never. Now, there is nothing wrong with enhancing your beauty. But just remember, when you make these decisions, beauty standards are trends. So what you wore or the hairstyles you had last year might not be in style this year. So when you make dramatic as enhancements to your body, eventually it's going to go out of style. And please hear me when I say this, I am not opposed to anybody getting their body done enhancing their inner beauty especially let's just talk about it real quick you know if you don't really got no titties or you don't really got a booty you know what i'm saying or you're just trying to shrink it in a little bit like i'm not opposed to that like 
just doing something to enhance what you already have. Like, you know, sometimes, although the titties are growing, they are sitting, but I ain't always had boobs. And I mean, I really still don't. This is an illusion. But, you know what I'm saying? For somebody that even has less than me or, you know, they want a little bit more booty back there, there is nothing wrong, in my opinion, in my opinion, don't come for me. Y'all gonna come for me anyway. I don't even know why I'd be giving a little disclaimer. If you won't come for me, come for me. But you know that we keep it cute and we keep it sweet over here. We just like to have conversation. Even if you don't agree with me, say that respectfully. But there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm talking about that dramatic look. That look that ain't natural that you can tell from a mile away that baby girl has been on the table. And it's very interesting to me because even the natural girlies are starting to lose weight and go for that thinner look. Like... Let's take Meg the Stallion and Ice Spice. These are girls that were known for being naturally thick, like their body was praised naturally, and they both decided to lose weight. And that's how you know the trend of being slim, thick, or thinner, or natural is coming back because people are even taking it to the point to take a drug called Enzymbic. Lose 42 pounds with me. Hi, my name is May. For most of my life, I have been 130 pounds. I'm currently sitting at 172 pounds. So what I would like to do is come on here every day wearing the same outfit to keep myself accountable in this series. So here is the starting. Okay, all right, and this isn't very flattering. So I'm going to fix this while I speak, okay. My BMI is currently over 30, and I know a lot of people are like, BMI doesn't matter, BMI doesn't matter, and that's okay for some people. I'm going to use that as a metric. So I'm gonna put some of my stuff up here, okay? So I want to lose this weight before January with no help, no Ozempic, when I say help, I mean personal trainers, classes. I'm going to do everything by myself. I also want to fit into those jeans back there. So every day, we're going to try those jeans on. So every day, I will be scarred. Um, <laughs> we're going to eat well, okay? We're not going to restrict too hard. We're going to enjoy life. Whatever happens, happens. But we do want to lose 42 pounds by January. We have our scale right here. We have our reformer right here because every morning I like to stretch and I forget to stretch because my reformer is in my living room so I put it in my room wake up I could literally roll into the reformer let me try ready I could literally do that okay so I have no excuses anymore I have a gym membership it is 24 hours okay I'm in my Nara Smith era. I'm cooking. If I don't lose this weight, it's entirely my fault this time. Before, I could be like, oh, the gym's always closed when I get off from work. My work schedule's crazy. I've changed my work schedule to accommodate my weight loss, okay? I only work three days a week. So four days out of the seven days of the freaking week, I'm going to be so good, okay? I don't even have a charger by my bed right now, okay? Because I don't want to doom scroll at night. My phone is going to be on the other side of my room, charging. I'm going to go to bed at midnight, okay? Wake up at 7 every morning, okay? Gym four times a week. When I'm at work, I've literally blocked off two hours in the middle of the day to go on a walk. All right. We're gonna check in every day. Let's try the jeans on so we have a starting point. And hopefully this sticks because I am not a consistent person. I don't do anything consistently. My life is changing all the time because I, I'm crazy. Like I just can't ever do the same thing over and over. So let's try the jeans on. I do not even know what size these jeans are, okay? And they're on my wall. So when I wake up, I can look at the reformer, look at the jeans and be like, oh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay. Constant reminders of things. Okay. These are vintage uh, Calvin Klein jeans and I thrifted them. And when I looked at them from afar, I was like, oh yeah, I can fit those. You know, I didn't fit them. 
So I believe once I lose the 42 pounds, bro, these are gonna go on real nice. So right now, they stop in my number one problem area, which is my thighs. So some people are gonna be like, oh, you don't have to lose weight, you don't have to lose the weight. Um, this has nothing to do with you, this is my journey. So I have about this much is literally just fat. So that needs to go. But yeah, so the jeans, not me breaking my scale. You see how hard it is to put these on? So this is where the jeans are today. Do, do, do. This is where they are. This is where they are. All right? We did it, Joe. Um, no, we didn't do it, Joe. We didn't do it yet. I'm going to stop talking. All right. Being very vulnerable right now on the internet. That is why I am word vomiting. So come along with me. Hopefully we can lose um, 42 pounds. Week five, oh, that big check in. So I have been on 0.25 for four weeks now. And tonight, about 10 minutes ago, I did my first 0.5 um, injection. And I did it on my left side of my lower stomach. I have was like supposed to do it this morning. And I was scared. I just, I really psyched myself up on injection days. And then going up a dose, I was freaking out. Uh, the last two weeks with injections, I pretty much adjusted to the 0.25, very minimal nausea, pretty normal appetite, but four full weeks binge free, like four full weeks, no over controlled eating. It has been really good. Um, so I lost two more pounds this week, so I'm 243 and I believe that brings me up to 17 or 18 pounds in a month of being on Ozempic. So that's really awesome. Um, I, like I said, I am nervous with the 0.5 because I'm probably not going to eat at all and my energy level is not going to be there, but I did all the things. So the last two days I have eaten nothing processed. I drank lots of water. I've also been taking my, um, smooth move tea. It's for constipation and I'm actually also eating my protein, which is, um, look how delicious that egg looks. It's, um, a whole wheat mix. McMuffin. <laughs> Bitch is thinking about McDonald's. Um, it's a whole wheat English muffin from Trader Joe's with a tablespoon of cream cheese on each slice and then a egg on top of it with some like pink sea salt. I know it's not a lot of protein, but I'm all out of protein shakes and a powder protein shake didn't sound very good. So I feel like I did everything I need to do for success. Um, I also have Zofran, I also have Preggy Pops, and I have a really short work day tomorrow. Um, and if I really feel like absolute crap, I can always bring my son um, to my mom or my mother-in-law's. So fingers crossed, we have a good week, a good weekend, and I'm just really, 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 really hoping for not too bad of nausea and I can be functional because the gym has been so good to me lately and if I absolutely feel like crap on 0.5, I'm probably just going to go back to 0.25 and just fill that with my doctor. So I'll keep you guys posted. Have a good night. I lost seven pounds in one week and this is how we did it. So if you guys don't know, I'm on a shot called semi-glutide. Semi-glutide is a compound of Ozempic. Before y'all come for me and talk about how diabetics cannot get Ozempic because we are the people that are taking away, that is not true. Please inform yourself. Ozempic and semi-glutide are two different things but the same thing at the same time let me let, let me tell you people get this misconception that like ozempic that diabetics take is the same exact thing that us people that are trying to lose weight take and it's it's really not that is why it is easier to access because it's cheaper actual ozempic that diabetics are taking is so much more ex so much more expensive because the compound is a lot different they're pretty much the same shit, but different. <laughs> so please inform yourself before you come on here and comment on people's things that are actually, people who are taking Wegovi, Manjoro, semiglutide, all those things. It is not the same thing as what diabetics are taking, okay? Stop. <laughs> there is a big price difference, okay? What I take is $300 a month. What people on that are diabetics take is like, in the thousands like I, I think it's like anywhere from like 900 to 1300 dollars okay it's not it's, it's not the same anyways now that we've moved past that part i've been on semi-glutide for almost a week tomorrow will be my one week mark 
I've lost seven pounds. I'm pretty sure like three or four of it was probably just water weight. But hey, seven pounds is seven pounds and I'm happy about that. The first um, dose that I took, uh, I only felt a little bit like woozy. Um, probably like the two hours after I took it. But after that, I have not had really any high side effects. I'm, I have been nauseated. Um, like no big side effects. The only thing I will say is like I've had a headache that has been lingering. Um, it has finally simmered down, but it's also because I probably haven't been sleeping. I've been, I don't know why, but I've been going to sleep really freaking late lately. So that's probably why I have a headache. I will say the food noise has not completely gone away. Like some people's food noises goes away like that. Like they don't think about food. They, like it's with me, I still think about food, but I'm also very more aware of what i'm putting in my body i also get a little bit fuller faster but that's also because i upped my protein food noise is very much there it's just not as bad as it was and i think as my dose gets higher the food noise will go away i'm barely on my first week normal medications with any medication it takes about a couple weeks to a month to actually kick into your system i have made so many different food swaps um, if you guys want a video on, on what I've swapped my foods with, like hot Cheetos, I've switched with some type of other protein chip. Like it, I just get your protein in. That is the most important thing. Get your protein in and you will feel full and you won't really like think about food as much because you're, you're full. You know what I'm saying? Protein is an acquired taste when it's like processed. So people do have to get used to it if you're a picky eater. I am not a picky eater, thank God. So it's, it's a lot more easier for me. And to answer your question, um, I found this clinic uh, here in Oregon that basically you can make an a, phone, a phone appointment or um, you can go in and they basically, the reason I really like this clinic is because a lot of other clinics were just like, oh, let me just send you this medication. And I actually like the fact that this doctor um literally took the time to explain everything he was like he like he really cares about his patients you know so it made me feel more safe with him and he's on it himself so like that's also like you know he's a prime example <laughs> i don't want anybody to think that semi-glutide way govi manjor is like an easy way out it really isn't it's just it's really just a way of helping you have more willpower and to help you cancel the food noise but like i said my food noise hasn't gone away i'm just more cautious because this shit is not cheap like 300 dollars a month is still expensive but that's why i'm more aware of what i'm putting in my body because i'm like damn i'm paying for this you know like i better make my money's worth so i think losing weight also has to do with what you eat and that's true in any occasion it's an 80 20 like 80 percent of your diet is what's going to help you lose weight 20 percent is like exercise or whatever else you want to do I'm just more mindful about everything that I put in my body now. I'm not saying that I don't have like some coffee here and there or snackish like here and there, but it's like healthier snacks, you know? Like instead of eating a chocolate bar, I got 40 calorie fudge pops um, that are, in, you know, you put in the freezer. If you guys like, again, if you guys want like a full little list of what I've switched my foods to, I'll do that for you guys. Let me know. But yeah, I've, I got it from a clinic. If you guys are interested in the clinic, um, if you guys are in Oregon, also, I think you don't have to live in Oregon. Um, they will ship it to you and they will just do a phone appointment with you. Um, but if you guys use my name, um, that helps me because I get pointsy points, you know. Um, and then if you get someone on if you start it then you get pointy points <laughs> you get a little bit of money off um on your next dose or whatever so i would be so grateful if you ended up getting it or you're interested in it and you actually want to get it let me know um the clinic is called uh slim care and it's in uh, portland oregon and if you if they ask who sent you say samantha hernandez all right because <laughs> bitch i get money too i get a little discount so help a girl out if you really want to try it but yeah if you guys want more updates i'm gonna update you guys um every week if you guys want i'm just saying um but yeah so i know you can't really tell but from last week if you go to the video of this this comment you'll see like the difference I don't know if you can see it or not. I can see it and I can feel it. I just, I don't know if other people can see it yet. But I'm also wearing a little bit of shapewear, so that might be helpful. But 
It's seven pounds. It's seven pounds, baby. <laughs> but I love you. I'm doing my research. I broke this video into three talking points so that we can get into the nitty gritty as to why this shift is happening. The first point is that they are more obtainable. So the value has decreased. When something goes viral or becomes more popular, it's typically because people don't have access to that. Take that ugly ass cyber truck. Let's be fucking for real. That motherfucker is ugly. It's not cute. It's not safe. And it's just not it. However, the girlies are buying that thing up because not everybody has the means to obtain it. Whether it's the money, whether it's the connects, like people just don't have access to that ugly ass cyber truck. So you're seeing the girlies buy it up and now people that are like me that also think that that thing is ugly as hell want to go and get the cyber truck. Why? Because it's not obtainable. Not because they like that shit. Not because they truly value that shit. But because not everybody has it. Everybody wants to have something that not everybody has. It helps them stand out. It helps them create their brand it helps them feel like they're the it girl because people are asking oh where did you get that or how did you obtain that like people are looking at you different but now that everybody has a bbl it ain't that no more you can literally put a bbl on layaway they have payment plans for bbl so before you only saw the popular girls doing it but now your average teacher your average nurse your average sales associates all have bbl so it's not exclusive anymore my second point is that plastic surgery in my opinion is not really going anywhere we're just not going to be doing that over dramatic extra enhancement surgery i do personally feel like they're going to be more subtle you're not going to see people getting huge asses no more where the titties are here the body is here and the the ass and hips are out here we're not going to be seeing that coke bottle shape hourglass shape because it's just not giving however i really think that we're going to see you know like the skinny bbl more proportionate lip filler but not too much like if it's not giving natural then it's not giving it and the third point that i wanted to bring up to you guys is why is this happening now i would love for us to have a discussion in the comments below so if you guys agree or disagree let me know but personally i feel like this is happening because of the whole black girl luxury era and i don't think that this is necessarily inspired by like a list b list or c list celebrities i think that this is inspired by that influencer that girl that you watch every day that girl that you inspire to be like every day that girl that's going to dubai that's going to turks and caicos that girl that is giving you that black girl luxury that old money like that's really grinding out here getting it out the mud like we've been watching these girls grow for example the leah faces the jackie inas the kyra amoniques like we have watched their story we have watched them literally go from having nothing to something and so we feel inspired we feel motivated you know what i'm saying and granted two out of the three that i named have bbls but regardless i'm just saying like they're still inspiring like they still make you feel like since they're that girl then you can be that girl too so we get to see them going and getting their matches we get to see them cleaning their house we get to see them doing the pilates we get to see them with the newest bags the cutest bags the designer bag we get to see that in real life like it's not even giving you know fresh prince of ballet where we had hillary and ashley and there's nothing wrong with that however those are fictional characters but we're seeing this play out in real life and people are inspired it's giving that soft girl era and as we all know history repeats itself even the y2k trend is coming back so I just think it's interesting to see where this is all going because two, three years ago, people were getting BBL, willing to risk their lives to get on the table. And again, if that's what you want to do, there's nothing wrong with that. However, the natural bodies are in. That natural glow is in. That soft girl era, just wanting to live your life to the fullest is in. And I have to admit, I'm very happy to hear this and i'm very interested to see how this starts to shift things like the girls that we see in the music videos the girls that we see as background dancers and at the concert the it girls like 
who's going to be on the commercials, who's going to be the face of these brands. Like, I'm just interested to see how this is going to shift. Is it really going to be a shift or are they just playing in our face and this is just short-lived? So like I said, let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this. Do you feel like this trend of natural bodies is going to be here for a while or do you think that it's short-lived for like a couple of months or something? Thank you guys for tuning into my video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I'm talking to you, the person that's about to click off this video. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe because we always have a lot to unpack here. And I'll see you in my next video. Love you. Bye.